The Federal Reserve has been supporting the stock market and this is indicated with their balance sheet and the purchases they have been making. Many challenges lay ahead as the market has been addicted to QE and excessively low interest rates. Without any miracles, the only option is to print more money and devalue the currency, sending stocks and potentially other assets nominally higher and higher. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. The market is waiting for QE4 and obviously with the interest rates at zero, they only have one other option. Now surely they could bring the interest rates negative, but I feel that QE4 could be around the corner. I'm not going to make any predictions based on time, but it seems like QE4 is inevitable. More and more as time goes on, I'm getting that feeling. This right here might be a little hard to see, but this is the Japanese stock market. A 900 point drop over, I believe it was a two days of worth of trading, and that is significant. So what will happen is that the central bank will step in and they will print up currency. They'll buy the shares and everything will be just fine. But I want to know who is exactly is invested in the Japanese stock market other than the central bank, because it seems like most of the time it's being sold off. This is a fun little picture here. And the caption at the bottom says, dude, got a free college degree thanks to Obama. Haven't found a job yet since his $15 minimum wage, though. Now, you might be on either side of the fence of this particular issue. What I'm talking about here is that the government always tries to step in to fix any particular problem, whether it's minimum wage or what have you. We always have the government basically saying this is the way it should be and they mandate that, they make it a law. I don't think that that ever solves any problems because we can see that every time they do step in, at least with all the bailouts, with all of the QE and what have you, the decisions don't seem to help the people. Let's move on here. Now this is very, very interesting to me. We're talking about the biggest mobiles, as in cell phones, company in China, I believe it's China Mobile, and you can see that they added, in one month alone, added 1.37 million phones, subscribers. Think about that for a second, 1.37 million people in a single month. You can go back, the previous month, 1.58, back in March was 4.6 million people. You're getting into entire populations of other countries. So when you have 1.37 billion people in the nation, it's very easy to make big differences. I'm going to hold on to that thought for a moment here. Look at this here. As you see this from The Economist, how they spend it. This is household spending, percentage of the total. And what we have here is an excellent chart to look at. I suggest everyone take a look at this, look at the country you're in. But the reason why I like to show this type of information, why I personally look at this whenever I can, is to give you that sort of sense of what's happening in the world. Who's doing what? Who buys what? What are they doing? And this is just a very small part of that, of course. But it gets your head to wrap around the ideas that not every country is the same in the way they operate. You need to get a feel for the people that are there. Which countries are more likely to engage in civil unrest and riots and all of this sort of deal. Very good to know. You may not be able to, you know, obviously you got to scroll down to see the whole chart. But the link will be in the description of this video in my book talking about China and how important they are for commodities, but also just the global economy. They're the world's largest car market and has only just begun. They're the most populous country, the world's biggest energy user, 
They have the most cell phones, they're the largest PC market, and they're currently the second largest economy in the world on its way to the top spot. This was written in 2012 when I wrote my book here. And what I'm just trying to suggest to you is think about the waves that one country could make to another country. What if they stopped purchasing all the cell phones? What about all that hardware that goes along with it and the ripple effect that has on economies across the world? And then we look at this very simple, just to show you the New Zealand consumer confidence down to looks like 2013 levels. This isn't the only country who's experiencing this right now. Many nations are having terrible consumer confidence and for good reason. New Zealand and Australia particularly affected by what's happening in China, but it is globalization and this stretches out further than that. And now for my most important chart of the day, look at this. You see the U.S. Treasury securities held by the Fed. So imagine that as the, the, the debt held by the Federal Reserve. Where do they get that money? Well, of course, they simply printed it up and bought up this debt. Just like other countries, they buy up shares of their own stock market. Well, here you compare that to the S&P 500 and you see a very, very accurate correspondence between the S&P 500 and the U.S. Treasury securities held by the Fed. Why does the stock market increase? Because the Federal Reserve prints up money, sending it up. This is the devaluation of the currency, giving a nominal increase to certain assets. Right now happens to be equities. Do you see the correlation here? Do you see how it is directly proportionate to what's happening? You can't deny that. The mainstream media doesn't cover it because they can't deny it. It doesn't go up because of the real economy anymore. It's computer algorithms. It's Federal Reserve. It's central banks around the world printing up money and forcing everything upwards. But you can't do this forever. Eventually, it catches up to you. And every time we have a flash crash with the high-frequency trading, every time we have a big scare, it's all because of the policies that they've put in place that are simply failures. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. You can actually flip through the book. If you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature, which allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.